Is this the best Windows alternative to an iMac? Well, yeah, actually, I reckon it is. I think that's the best way of describing this new Huawei MateStation X. If you're looking for an all-in-one, which not everyone is, because quite frankly, a laptop plus a monitor is really still a better option, but if you want something that has a single cable, plug and play with a beautiful screen, some decent performance, and a absolutely stunning design, this is definitely worth considering. Which is interesting, because if I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I probably wouldn't buy a Huawei phone without Google Play services. There are much better alternatives out there. It's a different story for Honor uh, and their phones and laptops, but what I would say is that Huawei's laptops, I've got the MateBook here, and also their monitors, and well, in this case, their monitors and PCs are still absolutely worth buying. So what makes this MateStation X actually stand out and why have they named it like some dodgy website that I probably shouldn't click on? Well, the problem is with most AIOs or all-in-ones, they were a bit rubbish, either far too expensive or not powerful enough or too businessy, which is why the iMac is so popular, especially after its M1 refresh last year. And for me, that is still the go-to all-in-one right now. But what if you want a good Windows alternative? So this is where I think the MateStation X fills the gap nicely. And of course, as remote working continues to boom, maybe it is time to reconsider buying something like this. So apart from the iMac and this Huawei, there are a few other nice AIO options out there. Lenovo makes some good business-focused ones. HP have a couple, including a 34-inch ultra-wide, along with an RTX 3060, which is very tasty. And also Asus have some more affordable, but still nicely designed options. And of course, Microsoft's expensive but lovely Surface Studio hasn't been updated since 2018. And although a third gen version has been rumored, there is nothing concrete as of yet. So this really is a direct alternative to the M1 Mac. Uh, and it's similarly priced, although with this we do get an extra four inches. This is 28 inches versus 24 and every inch counts apparently, but it is still, as you'd expect, quite expensive. In fact, this higher end model with 16 gigs of RAM and a Ryzen 7 5800H processor that's got eight cores and 16 threads for those counting, this will save back a cool 1800 pounds and so most likely $2,200 or so. But if you can wait, I might suggest going for the entry level model, which comes with a Ryzen 5 5600H, six cores, 12 threads, eight gig of RAM and 512 storage rather than a terabyte for about 1500 pounds. So it saves about 300, but for most people, considering this is not supposed to be a super powerful workstation alternative, that's probably powerful enough and saves you a bit of money. But I think the real beauty of this is that unlike an iMac, which has its big chunky chin on the bottom, so you definitely know it is an iMac and not say the new studio display, you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between this Mate Station X and also their terrific Mate View monitors, which I actually reviewed recently as well. Actually from the front and the back, you can't see the computer at all. It's only when you're side on, can you see this little uh, gap here, which is filled by what is essentially all the laptop gubbins. And because it's all at the back, it means the screen isn't bearing the weight, so you can tilt this really easily, even with a single finger, up to 20 degrees, which is very nice. The downside, though, is that like the iMac and many other AIOs, we only have that bit of tilt. There is no height adjustment, sadly, uh, or rotation or pivoting or anything like that, beyond just you know rotating the whole stand. And also, there's no visa mounting option, which is a bit disappointing. But despite that, this is still a beautiful piece of engineering. The fairly minimalistic design, the aluminium alloy build, and 92% screen to body ratio means everything feels just as bit as modern as my one and a half thousand pound Apple Studio display. And of course that doesn't come with a PC. The Mate Station also comes in two color options, plus we have this 720p webcam up top, although I wish there was a maybe a physical or manual shutter or privacy filter for it. And also they've shoehorned the speakers, the power button, and all the connections into the stand. Now, speaking of shoehorning, a big thank you to the lovely guys over at Surfshark VPN for very kindly sponsoring this video and also providing the best damn VPN you can get. For starters, there is an app for pretty much everything. Plus, you can use an unlimited number of devices on a single account. It's also incredibly quick and simple to use. Plus, their powerful clean web tool actually helps prevent tracking, malware, ads, and general bad stuff online. Now, most of the time I use a VPN to access content that's usually not available here in the UK, but I also use it to protect my privacy, particularly if I'm traveling or if I'm on public Wi-Fi, and especially if I'm logging into my bank or emails. 
But the best part is if you use the code TECHCHAP at the checkout, you can get a whopping 84% off and three months extra for free. And there's a 30 day money back guarantee if you're not super duper satisfied. So click the link below and get started with Surfshark VPN. As I mentioned earlier though, there is sadly no way to upgrade this at all. So you're stuck with the spec that you go for, which is why maybe it is worth paying that little bit extra, particularly to get the 16 gigs of RAM to make this a bit more future proof. But aside from the design, I reckon the first thing you will notice about this is the aspect ratio of this screen. It is three by two, which actually isn't very common. The vast majority of monitors and displays are 16 by nine. Personally, if I'm honest, my favorite is 16 by 10, like we do get on the iMac, which means you just get a little bit more screen real estate uh, on the vertical top and bottom. But this three by two is actually much closer to, well, a square rather than a wide rectangle which Huawei says is better for productivity thanks to the extra vertical pixels. But to me, it does kind of make having tabs side by side feel a bit more cramped than I'd like. And also watching movies and videos, just look at that. You're getting some pretty chunky letterboxing there, which does take away a little bit from wanting to use this as a sort of media hub. However, as you can see, this is a touchscreen, which of course the iMac isn't. So if you fancy uh, using your hands or a stylus with this, you can, especially if you want to tilt it like this and maybe lower it a little bit so your arm doesn't get uncomfortable. You could use this as a bit of a sort of graphical workstation display. But again, remember that this doesn't have a dedicated GPU. It's just the integrated graphics on that Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 5 CPU. So yes, you can you know do a bit of photo and uh, light video editing with this, but nothing super substantial. The screen quality is fantastic though. We get a 4K plus resolution, which means everything looks nice and sharp. It also gets reasonably bright up to 550 nits and color accuracy is great. I measured 100% sRGB and 95% DCI P3 gamma coverage. Although while we claims P3 should be 98% after its color calibration process. Viewing angles are good without much loss of brightness or color shift. The display HDR 400 support is pretty basic as far as HDR goes though, and nothing like as good as even a fairly basic TV these days. It is also only 60 Hertz, which is okay considering this isn't really meant as a gaming display. And it's the same as Apple's studio display, but I'm a bit spoiled coming from my 144 Hertz ultra wide over there. And also you'll notice that actually there are no physical buttons. There's no OSD joystick or anything like that. Uh, uglifying. Uglifying? Is that a word? If it's not, I've made it up now. Uglifying the side of the screen. It is very Apple Studio Display-esque in its design. And so if you do want to change anything like the brightness or the volume, then you have to do it either within Windows or using the keyboard and, well, mouse. This is being shot with the webcam. Uh, please ignore the behind the scenes horribleness. You're not supposed to see that. But quality is okay. It's actually very bright in here, but it's looking quite dark. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think of the audio and the video in the comments below. Hmm. Now, as you would expect, given the fairly beefy Ryzen 7 5800H, the main Station X felt pretty quick and responsive, even with multiple apps open and doing a bit of photo editing. In fact, the 5800H is probably overkill for most tasks that you need an AIO to do, because if you do need something properly powerful for some high-end editing or workstation applications, then chances are that you'll need something with a discrete GPU. And actually I did find Adobe Premiere Pro was a little bit sluggish given this is normally GPU accelerated. But then again, editing snaps in Lightroom was still very, well, snappy. As for gaming, well, the onboard Radeon graphics are fine if you play less demanding titles or don't mind dropping the graphic settings right down. And actually Rainbow Six Siege was totally playable at 1080p with ultra settings averaging 74 FPS, which is not too bad at all. And in Age of Empires 4, I got a reasonably playable 44 FPS average at 1200p with low settings. Although clearly the game didn't think I'd manage this as when I booted it up for the first time, the default graphics looked like this. However, one advantage of not having a dedicated GPU or any kind of crazy performance is that it is almost silent the whole time. I didn't really hear the fan at all. So if you are using this in an office or somewhere where you need to keep things chill, it's a good option. Let's test out the speakers. And if I jump into uh, this new Top Gun trailer, which I'm very excited for, it's probably gonna end up being rubbish, but I've been waiting this long, I wanna watch it. It does sound good. It's not the loudest I've ever heard, but it's rich, good amount of bass. Not too shabby for speakers built into the stand. Although, you just can't ignore these big bezels, these big letterboxing black bars out of the side. It does take away a little bit 
from the experience. Now, one thing that makes this stand out is that Huawei calls it a super device, which means you can use it as a hub for connecting compatible Huawei and also Honor laptop phones and tablets. So you can open up and control your phones on the Mate Station and even share files between devices with Huawei Share. It's pretty nifty, although setup can be a bit fiddly sometimes and actually I couldn't convince the Mate Station to even connect with my MateBook X Pro, but connecting a phone was pretty easy, although it can be a little bit stuttery sometimes, it's not flawlessly smooth between them. But still, it's good for checking messages, keeping apps open and answering calls via the MateView's quad mics if you fancy. So there are some nice smart extras there, but really only if you're in the Honor or Huawei ecosystems, which fewer and fewer people are these days. Actually, to be fair, Honor are still very good. I do recommend their phones. The Honor 50 is great value. And as I say, the laptops from both brands are still top notch. So you may still be in the ecosystem to some extent. There is another feature that sets this apart though from say an iMac, because you can actually use this as just a screen if you want to plug in your laptop or another PC and use it simply as a second monitor. I have to be honest, I've had a bit of trouble making it work. I've connected various USB-C cables to both my MacBook and my Windows laptops, and I couldn't seem to get it to work, but apparently it should work. So maybe put a little asterisk there. So the Mate Station X has a fairly hefty price tag, but we do get a few extras bundled in the box. And actually, I really like this Bluetooth keyboard with its integrated fingerprint sensor. Typing is great, and I like having this separate numpad, although I would have preferred perhaps USB-C charging instead of batteries. The mouse does feel a little bit cheaper, although I do like the solid metal wheel, but again, USB-C charging would have been nicer. So let's wrap up, and you know what? I've missed a good all-in-one. I don't review them enough, mainly because there aren't enough good ones to really talk about or that are, you know, exciting. I think the iMac does stand out, but if you want a good, premium, proper alternative, proper Windows alternative, this ships with Windows 11, as you can see, then the Mate Station X is the one to go for. Downsides, well, it is still quite expensive. Also, this three by two aspect ratio is gonna be a little bit like Marmite. You will love it or hate it, or, well, actually in my case, quite like it, but not have it all the time. I'm not sure how that really works. And also, it would be nice if it was perhaps a little bit brighter or had some higher standard HDR support, but as a whole, especially with these nice uh, bundle extras as well, which cost extra if you go for the Apple alternative, I actually really like this thing and I would recommend it if you're in the market for an all-in-one. But my advice does still stand that I would rather go with something like a MateBook plus a MateView monitor, which combined costs you a fair bit less than this and gives you the flexibility of having a separate laptop and just you know connecting them via one cable. So practically, I think that combination works better, but if you do want something like this, then, well, you should buy something like this. I will leave a link below if you want to check it out. And also, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Would you be tempted to buy an all-in-one? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, a little like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. And I'll catch you next time right here on The Tech Chat. Thanks for watching. Oh, and don't forget to check out Surfshark VPN. Click the link below and use the code TECHCHAP at the checkout to get 84% off and three months extra for free.